Hey everybody, it's me, Angela Walters. Welcome to this week's live chat where we talk about quilting. I answer your questions live almost every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. And if you're watching live, thank you for joining us. I hope that your May is going fabulously and that weather is beautiful wherever you're at and quilting time is uninterrupted and fruitful. Um, it's been a crazy week here. Jessica's son graduated, my daughter graduated, and lots of tears, lots of fun stuff going on. But always quilting, right? Quilting is my therapy. It's how I'm coping with all the life changes. And um, I love getting ready. To, I love chatting with you all and getting to like connect and answer, and answer your questions live. So in this week's live chat, we are recapping a video tutorial that I put out on Tuesday about turning the border corners. You notice I saved that for like week three. We kind of tiptoed into it. And so I'm going to show you the pictures, some quilting samples, give maybe some pointers that didn't make it into the video. And then if you're watching live, of course, I'll be answering your questions live as well. Jessica's here kind of monitoring the chat, kicking off the bad spammers and writing down your questions. So be sure to type those in now while you're thinking about it. And then she'll give those to me at the end of the chat. So, and be sure to stick around to the end because I have an exclusive promo code for you and a giveaway. So it'll be kind of fun. Anyway, so we are going to go over, you know, um, that previous tutorial that just came out. I'm going to show you some samples, but I do want to go over s some announcements or some upcoming events just so you can, you know, put that in your in the back of your mind. Now, I know not everybody lives in the great state of Missouri, just outside of Kansas City like we do. Um, don't brag. No, I'm just kidding. We love living here. But if you do live in the area or you're going to find yourself in the area in just, gosh, a week, over a week, very, very soon, <laughs> June 3rd, um, we're going to be doing our fifth annual quilt walk. And so it's a big event. Even though we are in a uh, large suburb of Kansas City, we're in the historic downtown. So when you're down here by the shop, it just kind of feels like you're in a cute little town. It's, it's a lot of fun. So um, just kind of mark your calendars. You're welcome to come to that. If you're going to be in the area, it's going to be, like I said, a great, great time. So for those of you that are like, I don't know what a quilt walk is, it's, it's truly a one of a kind event. Like I don't think there's a whole lot of these out there. Basically, I design a pattern every year that is broken into pieces and you walk around the town square, visit the shops and get the pieces of the pattern to make it for free. And then each of the shops that are participating has a quilt hanging up. We, we try to quilt, put quilts everywhere downtown that we can until they, you know, tell us to stop. And uh, so it's just a fun way to I don't know, introduce people to the downtown area. Those, there's a lot of cute little shops around here besides the quilt shop. There's jewelry stores, shopping, massages, restaurants, breweries, museums, all in that one little little uh, downtown area. So it's really pretty kind of fun to show you a little bit more of what um, we kind of like our home. So really fun. So wh basically what you'll do, I'll just kind of give you the tips. You'll just, it's from 10 to three. You can show up whenever and come to the shop and you get your map and the instructions. And then the first like three or 400 people will get a swag bag that says quilt walk and some coupons and a lot of goodies. Jessica has been knocking on doors and begging favors to fill that bag with some fun stuff. So there's gonna be some, some pretty good stuff. So if you're coming, if you're lucky enough, you can get that as well. So you'll stop by the shop, should you find yourself here, you'll get the map, you'll walk around, pick up the pieces, but we also have quilts out as well. So kind of like think of them as little exhibits. We'll have some quilts from Jenny Doan, who will be our featured guest next year. And then also Allison Glass is sending some quilts for a little exhibit as well. So kind of a fun way to see just an array of quilts. When we, when we curate it, it's mostly about the space that's available, what quilt will fit in this hole. Um, but we do try to have it a, a range of things to look at. And then I'll be at the quilt shop. I mean, I'll be around all day, but I'll be specifically at the quilt shop from 11 to 2, demoing, meeting and greeting, changing the trash, whatever whatever needs to be done. And so really fun. Plus, we'll do giveaways. It's, it's just a really fun time. So again, I know we have a lot of people that are on my live chats that don't live close, but we're only 45 minutes from Missouri Star. So if you needed an extra reason to come, that would be where you go. Um, but here's the, the example of the map that you'll get to go to the little locations and pick it up. So if you want to get it done fast, I mean, you can do it pretty quickly. Or you can linger and get lunch and um, come shop at the shop and, and have a good time with it. So I hope you can make it. If not, then save save the date for next year because we do this every year. And it's, it's kind of a big, it's one of our biggest events, the big kind of like, huh. And then after it's over, we go home and sleep for a week. Or at least I do. I don't know if Jessica does. All right, so let's get back to the quilting, though, not so much the um, upcoming events. So for those of you, most of you that are watching this, I know watch a lot and know what I'm talking about. But we are in the middle of a video series where I'm machine quilting a panel and we're learning tips and ideas for dealing with the borders. 
And so we, we already had week one and week two, and this week, week three came out. And we, turned, we talked about turning the corner. And so really what we're talking about is when we want that design to wrap around the whole quilt, give it that nice framing effect, um, we're gonna have to wrap it around the corner. And it's not difficult, but there's just a couple of things to think about. Now in this video, I gave you three different options. Uh, there's of course way more than you can do than that, um, but I just try to keep it simple so that it's not too overwhelming and you know, not a five hour video. So um, to find the videos to all the previous ones, all you have to do is click the link in the description box below. All those um, free video tutorials are all on my website. They're all on my YouTube channel, so you can check that out. The only payment I ask is that you'll give it a thumbs up or subscribe, and that just lets YouTube know that, that you, hey, this is a good video. Other quilters should, should look at it as well. Um, that picture here is just the expanded resource PDF. So every video I put together a free downloadable quilting diagrams and tip sheet. But then a few years ago, I started adding more resources. So if you wanted to spend $3, you can get even more resources if you want. All right, so let's talk about what we learned. Um, when I sat down and thought, what things, how do I want to talk about turning the corner? Because it is a, an important thing to know. The first one is just the pivot, the wraparound, right? We just need to get that design going one direction and turn and go the other. And so in that portion of the tutorial, I talked about how we're using that inner border corner kind of as our pivot. The fact of the matter is the corner of the border has more space than the sides. So we have a little bit more room to fill up and the design isn't gonna look perfect in that corner, but we just wanna get it as close as we can and move on. But if you could just put your eye on the inner border corner and know that that's kind of the line that we're heading for, that point that we're heading for, it will really help get you to that step and then you can turn that corner. Now for each of the three different options, I showed three different designs. Great, classic, versatile border designs. We did wishbone, like you can see here. We also did serpentine lines and ribbon candy. However, these techniques work with other designs. So as you're sitting around, you might be like, okay, I wanna take this design and pivot it. How, how can I do that? And so here we can just see that's the quilted example from filming that wishbone wrapping around that corner. Um, quilting it in that area and just a really fun way to give it a framing effect. And so like I do every week, I start digging through all my previous pictures. Then I fall down a rabbit hole of my kids when they were little and I start crying and then Jessica is like, what are you doing? Um, but she's crying too, so it's fine. Uh, but anyway, I found some old or you know quilts I've done in the past so we can see this technique on actual quilts. I know I say that every week, but it's my gift to you to make sure that you're successful with the designs that we're learning. So in this particular quilt, in those brown sashing, kind of like almost looks like a background. I, I love this quilt pattern because it like looks like it's 3D. I don't know the name of it, <laughs> unfortunately, but it's a cool one, whatever it is. So we can see that wishbone wrapped around, you know, where it, that brown kind of border sashings, and you can see the corners, how I turned it, just how we already seen. Um, having the same design around the whole thing does give it, like I said, that framing effect. It just really looks really nice. I love how it just, you know, borders the block or borders the quilt. I will say this technique though works best in thinner borders. That's one point I didn't really get through, get, you know, hammered into the video. Pivoting or quilting that design so it hits that diagonal on that border corner is really difficult when we're talking about large borders. So this is something I'm going to do in like one to four inch borders. I'm just roughly picking a number. Um, and then some designs don't turn the corner so easily, but wishbones is definitely one of them. And again, I just love that framing effect. And, and in this sample, we can see I put some echo lines in there, but you could leave those out as well. And then just a different portion of that same quilt. So we can see that the wishbones in the corner are not quite exactly the same as the sides. They don't, you know, they're not huge, but they're not the same size. And so, but it's fine. We just need to fill that thing and move on. Now, one thing I didn't say in the video either, or I didn't really, you know, beat that drum is when you're quilting on your sewing machine, you have the option of changing the orientation of your quilt. And everybody, when they start quilting, has a direction that feels more comfortable to them. I love quilting vertically, where my hands are moving vertically and I'm quilting that design. Um, so don't be afraid to turn your quilt if that makes it easier to quilt it in all different directions. Now, for those of you on a long arm, it's a whole different thing, right? We can't really change the orientation of the quilt, so we have to know how to quilt it from bottom to top, to left to right, on all the different directions. So when you're practicing a design like this or that technique, go ahead and practice in one direction only, and then once you get it, then you can wrap it around. I promise it doesn't take as long as you might think. So anyway, we can see the wrapping effect there. Now, this applies to any time I wanna take those wishbones and turn a corner. It doesn't have to be a pieced 
block, it can be quilting. And so this up close picture of a quilt, this is a Judy Niemeyer uh, quilt. I know you can only see that much of it, but you know, I had this big irregular area. So I started quilting some straight lines and then just treated it like a sashing. So if you don't have the space or the shape that you want to fill in, you could just make the shape you wish you had. So again, just knowing how to take that design and change the direction with it, it's gonna, it's gonna help you out in a lot of different ways there for sure. Another example, this is a sampler quilt that, um, gosh, I can't remember the name of it, way back in the day. But again, there's that thinner border, those wishbones wrapping all the way around, using that inner border corner to pivot. Now, if you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, be sure to check out that video tutorial because I, I basically show you and I show you on different machines as well. Now, when we talk about turning the corner, I, know I already said you can do it with the quilting. Um, it doesn't have to be pieced, but another example of just using the quilting to break up a shape and then quilting it as though it was a border or a sashing. So you can see that turning the corner there. If you were to go through all the pictures of all the quilts I've ever done, you could probably find less than 10 designs I use because they're just, I find designs that work in a lot of different ways and I use them in different, you know, arrangements and Wishbones is one of those really versatile designs. So if you're on the fence, go ahead and learn it because it's a really great one that you can use in a lot of different ways. But when we talk about wrapping the corner or using that inner border corner as our pivot point, we can do that with other designs as well, including serpentine lines. Now this didn't make it into the video tutorial because it was already pretty long as it was, but basically I'm quilting my serpentine lines, I'm hitting that inner corner, I'm pivoting and then going up. So again, you can do this with a lot of different uh, designs and areas that you're filling in. If you're nervous about it, if you're like, oh, I just really wish I could, I want it to look perfect or you know, no matter what I say about finish is better than perfect, you're like, no, I want it to look perfect. You can mark out just that section, mark out the lines in that border corner and then get going the next direction and, and have fun with it. Whatever you need to do to be successful, that's what I want you to do. And then here's an example of those serpentine lines wrapped around a border in a, an actual quilt. And this is about, I think, if I remember correctly, two inch border, I think that's a jelly roll they use to make that. So again, just wrapping it around, giving it that frame effect and before I went live in the type chat, um, some people were talking about serpentine lines and how it's just kind of tricky, but it's worth learning. So just keep going, keep working through it, get those free quilting diagrams, trace over it, because it does add a nice curvy kind of look to your quilt. And once you get the hang of it, it is so fast, I promise. Then if you want a challenge, you're like, oh, that's one, one corner is too easy for me, Walters. I want something more difficult. You can really get crazy with this. And so <laughs> this particular quilt, I found this picture and it just made me laugh because I'm looking at those piece sections, almost like a little border that zigs and zags. And, you know, so it's kind of pivoting and turning and not very much straight away, just all corners. So you can definitely do this in multiple corners in multiple ways. Um, the technique is still the same, just using that inner border corner as your pivot point and just getting it close as you can and filling it in as much as you can. Because I promise when you stand back and you look at it, it's gonna look great. And when people tell you, oh, it looks amazing, just don't point out what you don't love about it, it's gonna be fine. So I already said this, but you can turn the border corner with other designs and in that dark blue in the back, you know, in that quilt, you can see some back and forth lines. Same idea, using that inner border corner as my pivot to fill it in and change direction. And then even some uh, paisleys kind of right next to it. So again, really nice and, and classic way to turn the border corner. Um, lots of fun. And here in the lighter kind of green strip, you can see that swirl hook, same idea, putting that swirl hook so it falls right in that square, that corner, and then continuing on. So once you get the hang of the technique, you can, you can use it in a lot, a lot of different ways. And then here's just another one of that swirl hook. That didn't make the video either. Um, when I'm deciding what to quilt, I quilt a bunch of different stuff on the quilt, and then I pick the ones I think that will, will work really good, and we just didn't have time for that one. But still, same idea, quilting that inner border quilting to that inner border corner, filling in that corner, and then changing direction. And then I did show the geometric wishbone, which is just a, a different variation of the wishbone. If you're struggling with the curvies, maybe you like the straight, that might be a little bit easier. And I showed how we turn the corner there as well. Everything is the same. I'm still going to that inner border corner, how many times do you think I've said inner border corner in the last couple weeks between the video and this live chat? But it is what we're looking for. So we did see a couple, that other different option for turning the corner, but just know you can do it in a lot of different ways. Then option number two, which is near and dear to my heart because it's easy, is just skipping the turning altogether and putting a different design in that square, which is basically like what we were doing with the border motifs. But in this option, we're kind of taking out that pivot for designs that don't pivot well, 
or for thick, uh, wider borders, borders that are really wide. I don't want to try, you know, turning that corner with it. So for that example, I used the ribbon candy, which is Fuzzy Face's Fuzzy Face Place Leah's favorite design, right? I'm going to get you there, Leah. You're going to love it by the time we're done. Um, but I did the ribbon candy, and then we saw how we could just skip that all together and do something different in that corner. Like I said, this works in borders of all widths. And you can use different designs, even though I did like an echoed square. Um, just because I like the straight next to the curvy of the ribbon candy, you can fill that space with everything, anything. I've done swirls. Um, I've done geometric shapes. It's, it's a lot of fun. But I will tell you, this combination is kind of my go-to. This is the one I probably use the most, the ribbon candy and the echoed square. So if you look at this really up close picture, you can see in the green border, there's that serpentine line pivoting. And then there's my ribbon candy not pivoting. I really don't, I cannot get that ribbon candy to turn and look right. I just don't like how it looks. So I just avoid it altogether. Um, so an option for you, but you don't have to stick, like I said, with that square shape. You can do other designs. And so in this quilt, you can see a little bit of dot to dot quilting in that area. And when you have multiple borders, like a medallion, it just kind of creates a secondary design. It looks really cool and it's just easier. <laughs> so if you're like, I'm just trying to learn how to quilt the serpentine line and I don't want to mess with trying to wrap it around the corner, then this will be the option for you. And then lastly, I talked about quilting it like a motif. And that was just the best word I can come up with. I'm sure there's a better way to say it. But basically, instead of taking the design and pivoting and continuing on, we're, at, we're using that border corner almost like a, the part of a motif. And this is especially helpful for serpentine lines or feathers, directional designs that um, maybe I, I want to not wrap around. This one I was on the fence of including it, but it's so different. I haven't showed it before, so I had to include it and had to show it. Um, but it's very specific to the quilt. Not it's not necessarily great for borders that go all the way around because we're changing direction and eventually you have to hook them together. You can, I just haven't shown it yet in, in the tutorial. But I just love how it pulls it together. So if you have a pieced block or something like the panel that I designed for the challenge where I have that border, but it doesn't wrap all the way around. It just kind of is right there. Um, great option. And so basically what we're doing is quilting our serpentine lines. And really, you could throw this in option two, right? We're putting something different in that border corner. The difference is on the next side, it's going to be a mirror image of the previous side. So this is where I lose everybody, right? Everybody logs off. They're like, nope, I can't quilt the serpentine lines one way, let alone mirror it. But once you get the hang of it, that's going to be an option that you can do. And it, just, it looks elegant. It looks pretty. And, and here we can see, again, a little bit more of that. This is going to work in those thicker borders too and thinner borders because um, you can add as much echo, echoing or detail within that you know, uh, oval that you'd like and then just quilt the rest of your design. So option number three. And then that was hard for me to find a lot of pictures of because it's, it's this very specific technique. But I found this one um, from Julie Herman. It's her uh, Jaybird Quilts pattern. But I don't remember the name of it. I think it might be Daybreak if I'm, I don't think that's it. Anyway, um, you can see in that purple strip, which is kind of like a, a border. I mean, it's a sashing kind of, um, same idea. There's that motif and then that, that serpentine line right there. So again, maybe not for every quilt, but one of these days you'll be working on a quilt and you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do that. All right, so <laughs> when I was putting together the designs we're using uh, for the videos, you know, the serpentine and the, the, rib the ribbon candy and the wishbones, I realized, I'm like, oh, I should talk about my training kits. So I put together fabric. I've designed fabric specifically that is continuous that you can quilt right on top of the lines. So as the special live chat promo, you can take 20% off either the kit or the fabric. So you can see some different options there. Um, basically, when I sit down, I think what design would be fun for people to quilt along over to kind of get the hang of it. But I still want the fabric to look cool so that you could maybe use it not for a training wheel. And so this one is the wishbone one. And you can just go right along the lines and get the hang of the design. Um, if you think about how we learned how to write letters, you know, words and stuff, our teacher didn't just write it on the board and say, go for it. We traced. And so having that path or that map to follow will make it a little bit easier. And so um, and if you try this, you're like, I want to get that wishbone down. Um, you don't have to get the quilting perfectly on the line. Get it close. You're just learning how the design goes together so that you can do it in other areas. So we do have the the swirl and wishbone option. And then there's um, a ribbon candy option, you can see back there, and then also wood grain, which we didn't do today, but there's 
a couple different options there. And you can either buy just the yardage if you want to make a quilt out of it because it's just so pretty, or you can get what I call a training wheels kit. And the training wheels idea basically means I just have something to, to guide me along. And what you can do is you get fabric for the top and the back and binding. So when you're done, you have a whole cloth quilt that you can then bind or not. You know I'm not going to judge you if you don't bind it. And you can hang it on your wall or you can put it in your dog's bed depending on how you feel about it. And I promise you do a whole yard of the design over and over again, you will definitely see improvement over the whole thing. So um, a little bit up close pictures of the kits or you can buy just the fabric. To find out all of those, just click the link in the description box. And let me go back. Promo code is going to be training wheels. So to get 20% off when you go check out at Quilting is My Therapy, training wheels will get you 20% off either, either the yardage or the training wheels kit. So click that link in the description box, see it. But one person, one lucky quilter is going to win the training wheels kit of their choice. And I'll talk about that, how, how to win that here in a second. We'll just look at some pictures real quick. How pretty. So again, if you're struggling with the design, I don't have one for serpentine lines yet, but I do have the wishbone and the ribbon candy because they're so versatile and I use them in a lot of my classes. So a great option for you should you want to improve that. And then of course the wood grain, which we're not learning in this time, but kind of fun there. So um, to win the kit of your choice, all you have to do is after the live chat is over and it's now just a video, leave a comment on there letting me know which design you struggle with and would like to see on my next training wheels. Um, it's just a fun, it's a fun challenge to try to design it so it's continuous and, and I just think it's kind of, kind of fun. So anyway, I will pull, I will pick a lucky winner next, next week. What's wrong? Well, I'm connected. Uh oh, like my audio? Oh. Hmm. Whale? Okay. All right. I don't know why it's, I'll just, oof. Okay, well, I guess technical things are great, right? Hmm, I don't even know if it's recording now or not. Good thing it's towards the end. Um, well, I guess if for some reason some people can still see this, uh, Jessica's is showing that I'm disconnected. I'm not sure if the internet issue, tech issue, lots of fun. Um, but anyway, so you can leave a comment and win there. After, okay, good. Okay, audio is working, perfect. <laughs> They're like, why is she mumbling to herself? You know, technology is so great. That's why I love having Jessica here just to kind of monitor because I have done whole live chats where like, there's no audio. I'm like, oh, that's embarrassing. Anyway, to win the Training Wheels kit, just leave a comment and I'll pick a lucky winner next week at the live chat. Or of course, you can purchase those if you want a little bit of practice and have fun with it. All right, how about some questions? Because I know that usually, I see you over there writing furiously. I figure there might be some good ones. Um, again, giveaway, enter that. Next week, we're going to be talking about the swirl chain. So we're pulling everything together that we've learned and pulling it together. So, okay, the great question here. This person gets a gold star. How, I'm new to free motion quilting. How do I know how much pressure my press, presser foot should have on the fabric? How low should you go with the presser foot is basically the question there. Um, it's, if you have an adjustable height to your foot, you're gonna to wanna to adjust it to where it is high enough that the fabric is not rippling out in front of it. If it's too low, it's gonna be hard to push the fabric through. But if it's too high, you'll get skip stitches. So what I suggest is get a piece of fabric, quilt, raise it up a little bit, quilt, and then when you start seeing skip stitches, then bring it back down. Having that little bit of height is what's gonna help you get around the bulky seams, um, the, the, the areas that you, know, you gotta cram under that foot. So, that's not a very technical answer, but if you're getting a lot of skip stitches, it's too high. And if it's too hard to push through, it's too low. All right, what speed do I set on my long arm for a manual? It depends. <laughs> so the speed that you quilt is so integral to the stitch length, especially if you don't have a, a regulator, which I don't use. So when I'm quilting on my long arm or my sewing machine, the speed that I'm quilting depends on a couple things. The design I'm working on, how big or little I'm quilting the design, and how much wine I've had. Okay, not really, I can quilt fast when I drink wine too. But the idea is if I'm doing tiny pebbles, I'm gonna have to slow down. And if I'm quilting big feathers, I can go faster. Now I'll tell you what I use and hopefully it will translate. So I have a handy quilter Avante and its speed is a percentage. So when I'm going up, it's like 70% to 75 to 78%. That's usually, and that's the motor's capacity. But that's gonna be different depending on your long arm. That's like, I don't know, if your long arm has a bigger motor or a different way to 
gauge the speed, then that's not really going to help you. Basically, I want to go fast enough that I can't critique the job I'm doing while I'm doing it. Right? I don't want to be like, oh, I hope this looks good. But I don't want to go so fast I'm out of control. And honestly, finding that middle ground is, is going to come with practice. Try not to worry too much about it. It will work itself out with practice for sure. Hopefully that helps. That was very vague. But, you know, we can do Will you do a live of the quilt walk? Great idea. Jessica put smiley face, underline, do this. No, I think we should. I think I'll, I'll keep that and we'll maybe do that. It'll be kind of fun. What is the date for next year's quilt walk? And this is why I love you, Jessica. She wrote it on here for me because she knows I'm not good with dates. I'd have been like, oh, no. June 8th. June 8th is next year's quilt walk. Like I said, Jenny Doan will be the featured guest. Um, we don't have everything planned out, but we're thinking like a trunk show, maybe a meet and greet, and then the... The, the nice dinner that we're doing, that I'm doing for this quilt walk, we'll have her do it there. So June 8th, 2024. Isn't that crazy? 2024. Are the quilt walk shops close? Oh, wait, are the quilt walk stops quilt shops or other shops? That's like a tongue twister. Are the stops on the quilt walk other quilt shops? They are not. So being down on that downtown square, it's other businesses I think quilters will like. So it's like, um, oh gosh, I'd blame. It's just some really cool, there's Mama and Me, like clothing places, Catfish and Tater. So it, they're all very easy to walk to, though, because let's be honest, June in Missouri is just, it's a, it's a crapshoot. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. Last year was warm, <laughs> and the year before we got a little bit of rain, so we just never know. Um, they're close, they're easy to get to, and they're not quilt shops. So, you know, they all have to go look at other stuff. But you'll just pop in, they'll have the piece of the pattern for you, and then you can look at the quilts or get a deal and... Um, it's just a fun way to see the different, different shops around here. All right, y'all. How fun. I, I know, I just want to reiterate this. I know we are in May and it's a busy time of the year. It's definitely busy here. Um, and I know we don't all have time to quilt as much as we want to, unfortunately. So even if you're like, oh, I can't get to that video, I can't get to that tutorial. It's all on my website, quiltingismytherapy.com. It's all on my YouTube channel. So you can come back and check out those videos at a, at a later date for sure. And, and um, use them for your your resources because I want you to love machine quilting as much as I do all right well everybody don't forget you can get the 20% off the training wheels either the kit or the fabric or you can win one by leaving a comment as soon as I click end live and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next month right June I think uh, for the next week's live chat until then everybody happy happy quilting